Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass today for Pope Francis, all our bishops and priests, for world peace, for Sister Carol on her feast day, for Sister Marga, the poor, the sick, the dying, and those recommended to our prayers, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners and the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And it's the feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. It's the last Sunday in ordinary time. How worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honor. To him belong glory and power forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So this is a very special feast on which to bring the liturgical year to a close. Feast of Christ, the universal King. He is King of our hearts, as well as King of all creation. And so for the times we have neglected or not witnessed to the beauty of the kingdom, we ask pardon with confidence. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you that led out and brought in Israel. And the Lord said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go to the house of the Lord. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's witness it is to praise the name of the Lord. They were set the thrones for judgment the thrones of the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, we give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or principalities or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar, and saying, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals 
who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingly power. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes uh, priests getting ready for the Feast of Christ the King uh, scramble around wondering what to say because kingship is not a thing we're very familiar with. Probably none of us have met an actual king. They're scarce these days because they used to be very common. But then we wonder why was this feast instituted and some political um, <laughs> reasons are offered. Uh, and why does the church end its liturgical year with this feast and so on. But if we look carefully, we see that this is an extraordinarily rich and beautiful feast. If we think of the scriptures, the New Testament, and we think of Jesus' trial appearing before Pilate, who represented the emperor, and he says to Pilate, yes, I am a king. For this I was born. For this I came into the world. But my kingdom is not a kingdom of this world. It's a kingdom of the Father, a kingdom of God. And so the scriptures of the Passion reveal to us dimensions of the kingdom of God and of Christ the King which no one had anticipated or could imagine, and we cannot fully imagine it either. King of all creation, king of the universe. So it's a cosmic title and a cosmic reality. And if we look not just at the scriptures, but at the reality of what happened, to the cross of Christ on Calvary is nailed the proclamation, which every Catholic knows, I-N-R-I, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Judeorum, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So he is crowned on the cross. And this, of course, makes it an extremely special kind of kingship and kind of reality. And part of the, if you like, coronation of Christ on the cross was this dialogue with the thieves. One thief uh, deriding him, joining in the mockery and cynicism, and the other thief saying, you shut up, basically. We deserve this. But this man on the cross between us 
has done nothing wrong. And then, prophetically, in all that torture and all the blood and horror of that day, he says to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. So that was an extraordinary act of faith. Given the circumstances, it would be perhaps incredible if Jesus had just performed some fantastic miracle. But when he was dying and being executed, assassinated, this man could see Jesus as a king. And so it is an extraordinarily detailed and wonderful feast. And then if we look carefully at the liturgy that we celebrate, the preface particularly describes in detail the nature of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ speaks about an eternal kingdom and a universal kingdom. A kingdom of truth. Based on truth, the truth of God. A kingdom of holiness and grace and beauty. A kingdom that lives in people's hearts, those who profess Jesus as Lord. And a kingdom, of course, which is a a kingdom based on justice and truth. A kingdom of love, infinite love, expressed best in suffering. A kingdom of peace. And so undoubtedly this is the the best way to bring the whole drama of the liturgy to a conclusion because this is looking forward to the fullness of our participation in this kingdom, in this peace and truth and grace and beauty. That is why we are proud and happy to pray the words of the Redemptorist hymn written by a Redemptorist. Hail Redeemer, King Divine, Priest and Lamb, the throne is thine. King whose reign shall never cease, Prince of everlasting peace. Amen. We stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, (coughs) of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you, bringing with us the world in need of peace and justice, in need of your kingdom. And so, in Jesus' name, we pray. That our church and parish community may be a faithful witness to the love and mercy of our Heavenly Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, Archbishop Stephen, Bishop Sylvester, Father Schoen, and all who serve the church may be teachers of God's peace and ministers of reconciliation among all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all government leaders throughout the world legislators, judges, and civil authorities may serve with wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may proclaim the great mystery of God's love through our compassion and charity to the poor, the homeless, and the abandoned. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Jesus, our Redeemer, may restore to health and hope the sick, the suffering, the recovering, and the dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our deceased relatives and friends may be welcomed by the victorious Christ into paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the God of mercy and compassion will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We praise you, O God, who are the Lord of creation and Father of all nations. Hear the prayers we offer in joyful hope until the coming of our Messiah and King, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. And through him and with him and in him 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, the ruin of souls. Amen.